Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about my experiences with the Z6 II so far. So first things first, some of you are quite concerned that I've not uploaded a video in a while and I appreciate that but there is a reason and the reason for that is because I wanted to shoot with the Z6 II as much as possible and I have just hit 5,000 shots with my Z6 II, hence the title of this video. So those 5,000 shots have been a mixture of things, they've been me shooting for my own purpose, they've been me shooting on jobs, they've been me shooting on behind the scenes events, they've been tons of different things but I have just hit 5,000 shots taken on my Z6 II. Now that's quite a, a big achievement for me to put that into perspective. My old Z6, I've had that for two years, I had that since the launch, that was the camera that I used in my very first video and that camera only has six and a half thousand shots on it. So to put almost that same amount of shots on this camera in such a short period of time really shows how much I've used this camera. The reason that my Z6 doesn't have that many shots on it and the reason that the Z6 II I wanted to use it now is because of Z7. When it comes to stills photography for me, Z7 and Z7 II are going to be my main stills cameras. My Z6 cameras are always been and always will be my video cameras unless it comes to low light. So all of the shots that I've taken and all the shots I'm going to talk to you about and all of the experiences I'm going to talk to you about, I wanted to get that experience. I wanted to use this camera as much as possible because I knew that as soon as my Z7 II arrived, my Z6 II would instantly become my video camera. In certain situations, I will still shoot stills with my Z6 II because of low light and so on. The main purpose of a Z6 II for me is going to be video and my Z7 II is going to be stills. So because I've now taken those 5,000 shots, I just want to talk about some of the experiences and some of the things that I found really useful in this camera and share them with you. So first of all, I want to talk about the viewfinder. I've heard and I've seen a lot of comments about people talking about the viewfinder being slightly different or the speed of the viewfinder being slightly different and I can't see any evidence of that. I've not seen any evidence of the viewfinder switching from the screen to the back to the viewfinder again any faster. I've actually done a bit of back of camera recording of that, so I'll show you that now. And as you can see in this video, I just can't see the difference. Now, this wasn't something that I found to be slow in the first place, so this never caused me any issues with my Z6 or with my Z7. So for me personally, that doesn't really bother me, but it's just something to highlight because I know I have seen people's comments and people asking about whether or not the transition from screen to, to viewfinder is any faster, but that's not something that I've seen, unfortunately. One thing I will mention though is that the flip out screen deactivating the viewfinder, that is an absolute godsend. I've mentioned that in some of my previous videos, but that's one of those little things that is, just works really well. The next subject I wanna talk about is buffer size. Now on paper we know that the buffer size in the Z6 II and in the Z7 II as well is bigger and, and you can shoot for longer. But one thing that I, I never really appreciated was how that made a drastic difference when it actually came to shooting. Because I shoot a lot of wildlife, sports, landscape stuff as well, but buffer doesn't really matter for landscape. So from my wildlife perspective, when I was shooting wildlife with Z6 and Z7, I kind of attuned myself, I kind of just preempted the fact that I had quite a small buffer and what I tended to do was just shoot in very small bursts, let the buffer clear, shoot a burst, shoot another burst, shoot another burst, let the, by that time the buffer would have cleared, shoot another burst and so on. So I kind of accustomed myself to shooting that way. Now I'm still shooting that way, I still shoot in small bursts. I'm not saying that anybody should go out and fire 100 frames and fill their buffer. That's not the way you should be shooting. But I still think that you should be shooting small bursts. And because the buffer is larger now, it just really means that you can just shoot small burst after small burst and not worry about that or not have anything in the back of your mind that you might hit that buffer. Especially if you're shooting an animal that's continuously moving and you just want to have the flexibility of just shooting those few extra frames that's where it's going to come in handy and 
it's something that really stuck out to me that the depth of the buffer now is significant over the pre-existing cameras. As I mentioned, if you shoot things like landscape and architecture, it doesn't matter. But for those of you that are shooting sports, wildlife and so on, it does make a huge difference. And one thing that I've never really heard anybody talk about, but one thing just to be aware of, is that if your camera hits the buffer, not only does it stop shooting, but it also stops focusing. So that can mean if you're trying to shoot a continuous roll of somebody running towards you or somebody or a, an animal flying around or whatever it is, as soon as you hit that buffer, your camera stops shooting but also stops focusing and then when it starts to shoot again, it'll start to reacquire focus. So that can mean that especially over extended periods of time, not only are you missing shots, you're also losing focus. One of the things that I thought, well, you know, a bigger buffer is great, but I'm never really going to use that. But actually I thought, you know what, it was something that was a notable difference. Especially when I was shooting birds, wildlife with the Z6 II, it was something that I just knew that, I, you know, actually, actually, you know what, I could continue shooting if I wanted to. And that was irrelevant at whatever frame rate, whether I'm shooting at maximum frame rate, whether I'm shooting in continuous high, whether I'm shooting in high extended, whatever it is, I just allowed the camera to shoot and it meant I could shoot in more smaller rapid bursts without having that worry of the buffer size in the background. So let's talk about some of the images that I've taken with my Z6 II. I'm obviously not going to show all 5,000 to you. Um, this will be an extremely long video. But what I'll do is I'll just show you a collection, a mixture of different things that I've used it for. So really low light stuff, wildlife, backlit subjects, low light wildlife. I'll put all the information in for settings and lenses and so on as well. So it gives you an idea of, of what focusing modes I used, what shutter speeds and so on.
Okay, so now for the, 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 the big subject, autofocus. The biggest difference for me in autofocus is low light autofocus performance. The Z6 II can just autofocus in low light situations that my previous Z6 can't. I'd have to go into like low light autofocusing mode or I'd have to just really try and I'd move the focusing point around to get the camera to focus somewhere else. Whereas I tend to find that the Z6 II just autofocuses a lot more accurately as well. So low light autofocus for me was the, was the one that the Z6 II really stuck out, especially with the forest scenes with the deers. That was something that, you know, the camera just worked really well. It just focused on the subject, kept them in focus, and it worked really nicely. One thing that has changed for me is how I use the autofocusing system. I can now use subject tracking and auto area a lot more than I used to in my Z6. I just have a little bit more confidence around the auto tracking area and the subject tracking area than I did before. Previously, I would have used dynamic and wide area small and they work great. And they still work great and I'll still use them in certain scenarios, but a lot of my testing over the past couple of weeks has been based around me using auto area and kind of forcing myself to use that auto area as well. It's still not perfect and... The example of why auto area doesn't always work, the subject in the frame is just too small for auto area. So the camera is looking at the larger scene and the small bird in the frame just isn't big enough. So this is a perfect example of where you would either move to wide area large or you would move to wide area small or dynamic. So as I mentioned, it's not perfect. You just need to choose the right mode for the size of subject. But if the subject is large enough in the frame, then you can rely on subject tracking and auto area. But this is a perfect example of using the wrong mode. This isn't the camera's fault. This is the wrong auto focusing mode for the subject. And it's just focused on the background because the subject is too small. One thing to keep in mind is that you shouldn't get carried away with the animal detection. So animal IAF face detection is, is purely officially based on cats and dogs. And I've got a couple of examples that I'll show you where it just doesn't work on things like birds, deers and stuff like that, but it's not designed to work on that. Nikon have never stated that it should work on birds or you know other animals other than cats and dogs. So just be aware of that, that the camera will still revert to auto tracking or auto area. It won't use face and eye detect on certain animals, but that doesn't take away from the results. I still get great pictures and I just know that that's the way that I'm shooting my wildlife stuff and it works fantastically well. So I can still rely on the auto area, but I'm not using eye tracking, if that makes sense. Eye tracking, face tracking is one of those things as well that worked really well in low light scenarios. And again, it just felt like I had more confidence in that than I did previously with Z6 and Z7. So just to summarize, I do feel like the improvements will make a lot of subtle changes to just improve the quality of life when it comes to using a Z6 II. Are those changes enough for somebody to move from a Z6? I don't think so. If, if you're already happy with your Z6, then that's still a great camera. This Z6 II was never really aimed at Z6 users. It was aimed to fix a lot of the things that people who didn't jump in right away had problems with, like the no grip, like dual card slots and so on. And then obviously we get the added benefits of faster frame rates, larger buffers and so on. So for me, from a stills perspective, you know, if you're a DSLR shooter and you wanting to go into mirrorless, you don't have to go into mirrorless, remember that. If you want to move into the mirrorless system, then I think the Z6 II is a great way of doing that. If you already have a Z6, then your Z6 is still gonna be great. But there are a couple of little features that I think you might appreciate that could make it worthwhile, but obviously that decision ultimately is gonna to fall to you and how you use your camera. But um, I definitely, uh, using this camera for stills a lot more than I used the previous Z6, um, it's definitely opened my eyes into some of those changes that I thought were okay or good changes, but actually they do make quite a big difference when it comes to shooting um, a lot of difference, in, especially in a lot of different scenarios as well. So I hope that you found this video useful. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this is now my start of sitting down and getting all the videos that I've made out. So there's gonna be a lot of videos for the remaining month of December. Z7 II video as well, because now I've got my Z7 II. Um, 1424. I also have a Nissi 
holder for the 1424. Spoiler warning, it's amazing. Um, I actually think that's the best landscape setup you can buy, so I'll make a video on that. You'll see that very shortly. But lots of stuff. So, yeah, um, I apologize that I've not uploaded for a while, but I really wanted to spend a lot of time with this Z6 II so that I could say I've used it. I, I've shot all of these different things. I've used it out and about rather than me just sitting here going, yeah, it's great. It does all this. I've tested this, you know, for like 10 minutes or a day. I don't want to just use the camera for a day. I wanted to go out and take as many shots as I can. So as I mentioned, I've just hit 5,000 shots on my Z6 II and the experience has been great all around. And I wanted to share some of those experiences with you as well. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this video useful. Goodbye.